What was the one thing you remember besides the Florida Tennessee beat? Uh, Saturday, I, I, and then obviously the next thing would, would come into play would be that Coastal Carolina game. Uh, that was, you know, at the previous show, Wes talked about that as, as he obviously tells him. And, you know, I, it was just amazing how they kind of showed up and, and played that game. They looked very, very good that game. So I was pleasantly surprised. I haven't really watched them personally, but just watching them during those, you know, couple of plays versus BYU, they looked pretty solid against a very good BYU team. I know it was kind of a, a last minute expectation matchup, but I was really pleasantly surprised about how they handled handled that whole game that day. Yeah, my my Aztecs have to play BYU this week, so I got a feeling they're going to get spanked because BYU is going to come back with an attitude. All right, so John, let's oh, talk yeah. about let's talk about your Sunday because I saw you Saturday, but I didn't see yep. Sunday. But I know you gave us two winners. You gave us Green Bay and then the over in the uh, Monday night game. Uh, so talk about Sunday. What's what's one or two of the plays or games that you really they they made you feel good on Sunday? Uh, well, sun, Sunday, we kind of had a couple of teasers to play it safe. We, we were uh, one of them was on the Colts, um, which obviously they look good. And then the other one that I didn't really like so much was the Titans. I was on the Titans in, in another teaser that day. And I was just disappointed about how they played versus the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that first half was just atrocious. It was painful to watch, especially if you were a Tennessee Titan better. Uh, it was, it was very, very brutal. You know, they kind of made some plays in the second half. And, you know, maybe a couple late garbage runs. But I, I was just honestly shocked about how that how that game went, specifically the first half. I, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And, and if I'm correct, I think Tennessee was home, too. I'm not exactly sure. So it, it was just shocking just to see that. No, that was that was Cleveland Brown record setting. Uh, and, and, you know, what's funny because we were watching that in the sweep. It wasn't the game that was on, but we got our bets and we were, were going upstairs and they kept scoring. Yeah, I kept scoring, and so Chaz kept saying, "Oh, we should, we should hop on Tennessee Live," and they kept scoring, and they kept scoring, and finally, it's like thirty-eight to seven or something, and uh, and he so he hopped on him in the second half, and it was really an, an actually an easy winner in the second half, but when I saw that game. Uh, it reminded me of the Patriot game. When I saw the way the Patriot game went to to the halftime. It, it, it scares it scares you away sometimes because maybe they're just not showing up at all. Now Tennessee made an effort, and if you see the scoreboard, it, that's not what the game looked like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, like I said, they, they had a couple very late touchdowns that made it look a little bit closer. If you kind of were just glancing at the scores and didn't really watch the game, but uh, I mean Baker looked exceptionally well. The the Browns defense looked very good. Uh, you know, Henry had, didn't look the same Henry as we used to, I believe he had a fumble and, and, and just some misplays on that. So yeah, it was, it was shocking to see that one. Uh, but my main play for that day was the Packers. I kind of held myself out for that night game, which, you know, worked out very good. There was also kind of a little sketchy play with that at the end, uh, might've been a late backdoor cover, but we had a nice run, you know, late in the fourth quarter to get that. So that was close, but you know, the Packers were my main play, and it worked out for us. Well, yeah, but if you'll remember, because I was in the sports book, and they, you saw some emotion because I left the room, and it was, what, 20 to 3, I think, is when I left the room. And I got downstairs, and it was 20 to 16. Now, the Westgate is a pretty big property, like most of them are. And so you got to walk all the way down to the elevators and then you got to go downstairs. You got to walk all the way. As you both know, in the old days of sports betting, because sports betting isn't that profitable for the casinos, they put them in the back, really in the back. And so I had, I had no idea what happened. They filled me in. And now at this point, I'm giving eight and a half. I'm losing. But then, of course, they came back and, and that guy had a 77 yard and it was one of the most incredible 77 yard runs it wasn't where he broke free and and ran 77 yards he he had to stop and go again and stutter and spin and he was literally all the way down from the 10 yard line making moves just to get into the end zone and and we all know in sports many guys just if they get tackled at the two you're not guaranteed anything 
Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what I was. I was screaming the whole way. Just punch it in. Just punch it in because I'd obviously rather have them score six right there instead of going through the whole drama of trying to get that in. Because like you said, you never know. You know, a, a couple of runs, a missed pass, and then all of a sudden they're just thinking about you know kicking the field goal because it's late in the game. You know, the Packers don't necessarily you know worry about covering, but us as betters, we, you know, we want that cover, especially when we're at that eight number. You know. Oh, I, I've said that many times to people with me, I, I, you know, the coach don't care. And, and Wes talks about it all the time. You, you get a W, whether you're one point ahead or 77 points ahead, it's one W. It counts for yep. one win. But yep, be, yep. Before we talk to Wes about his weekend, I got to tell you the story about your overplay. So what happened is I had Pittsburgh and the under and Buffalo and the over. And so the kid said to me, how could you bet that? They wouldn't let me bet that. I said, what do you want? And I showed him my ticket. Oh, no, we wanted Pittsburgh in the over. I said, oh, well, they probably think Pittsburgh in the over is going to be the, the bet. So they wouldn't let you bet it. And that's really that house advantage kicking in. But I had Pittsburgh in the under in the first half, which is an easy winner. Not as much so much for the game, but I had it in the first half. So then we're at Wolfgang Puck's restaurant in the MGM. And we're eating, and we're watching that first half. Now, if you'll remember that first half, there were two goal line stands. And when you have the over, and not one team, but two teams get stopped inside the five-yard line on both ends of the field, that's like 14 points. It's killing you. Yeah, yeah, that was brutal. I, I thought I right there, even though I knew it was early, I was like, that's such a killer because having the ball that close and not score – um, you, you know, two times what is, is crazy. So like you said, that's 14 points taken off the board. Well, even six, even yeah. six. When you got, if you got a quick six points, you got the over, you'll take six points. We got a goose egg, but here's what happened. They get the ball back and they got about a minute and a couple of timeouts. I'm talking about Buffalo and it's 14, seven. So Buffalo is going to win. Even if San Francisco scores the touchdown, because I'm getting a point and a half with Buffalo. But the Wolfgang Puck TVs are a play ahead of us with our TV at our table, watching it on our phone. Uh, but you couldn't see the TV. We knew it. As soon as we came in and we settled down, we knew they were ahead of us because we saw a play as we walked to our table that we then saw on our phone. So we knew they were play ahead. And this is probably maybe, like I said, a minute and a half left in the first half. Well, my kid can't handle it. He can't handle the fact that he knows if he wins or loses 30 seconds earlier. So he he doesn't even sit with us. He's watching the game over by the bar for 30 seconds because it was a 30-second delay. But yeah, then they, they, they punched it in. They got that big field goal, and, and it was a four-teamer for me. Yeah, that the second half, obviously, was with such big goal, going back and forth from both teams. Yeah, I was a little worried that first half. Uh, I think on the second fourth, uh, when they when they got stopped on fourth, uh, I forgot. I think there was a fumble, and then you know they luckily they got the ball back and kind of scored. So that almost kind of made up for that second stop a little bit. Which, right, which they did. They the, did have. A, yeah. They had a quick turnover, but yeah, the, yeah, which kept they, that in the game. Once, once that that, and I would not. I had Buffalo, but I would have not had that over. My son had a huge parlay. He had like a C note two teamer and a two hundred dollar two teamer for the sec for the game. And, and he bet it because I told him Buffalo and you told him the over. So we done did win somebody money. Yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> One of the things we always do is we always talk about the live action on the Thursday Night Football. Last week, of course, we didn't have it. Next week is our last show before the holiday break because we are not going to talk on Christmas Eve. We are not going to talk on New Year's Eve. Now, I'm saying I'm saying we're not going to talk. We not we're not going to talk on Zoom so the audience can hear us and watch us. But we're gonna we're gonna talk because we we talk throughout the week. There's about a dozen of you guys from the show that I talk with every week. Not everybody bets all the time, and a couple of the guys like Tom Vasco, he's been ill and he's had some surgeries and stuff. So when you know when life's throwing you curveballs, sports betting's really it's really not high in your agenda. You know, I've, I've had a few of those times in my life, so I, I appreciate it. But it looks like here that the Rams are up seven to nothing. Yep. Now, 
I I told everybody that would listen to me in Vegas, I'm talking total strangers. Wes says, don't bet Thursday night, don't bet Sunday night, don't bet Monday night. One of them actually asked me who Wes was, and I said, Blackhawk Wes. And he goes, tell him to stick to hockey. <laughs> but again, drink tickets will make strange bedfellows, will they not? It, it always does. It's That's what happens. You know, you, you want to kind of get in the action on the game, especially Thursday night NFL. You know, like I said, I, I see it more often than not than majority of betters. You know, if the game's on TV, they, they got to bet it, which is not always the best mentality to have, you know, especially if you want to kind of do this professionally or if you're look the, looking at this as a second income type deal. You got to learn how to pick and choose your spots. But, well, it's, you know. it's it's so funny because I, I again I told you guys I trust you, but I I broke Wes's rule. Well, first of all, I'm in Las Vegas. I'm betting Sunday night. I'm betting both. I've been if if the rabbit and the dog ran through the casino, I'd be betting on the number of the dog. <laughs> but I went down as so I'm watching Christmas movies in the suite. Now they're saying I'm in a suite, so it's a pretty nice setup. I'm watching Christmas movies, and I got the TV on mute with the game. And I go down because there's no way Kansas City's not going to score 20 some points in the second half, right? They've been kicking field goals. And the next day I said, you know what? I got dressed to lose that bet. I got dressed. I went downstairs, made the bet, went back upstairs, got undressed, got back in bed. You know, I had everything I needed. Life was pretty good uh, yep. just to lose that bet. So I should have listened to West, but I did. Yeah, some, sometimes a no bet is the best bet. But, you know, when you're in Vegas, you know, different situation for you. You know, you were here visiting. You got the games on. You know, you know, you got your son with you and, and, and some, you know, friends. So you got to kind of have I, I, a little I, bit I, of action. I, on I was game. cashing a lot of tickets. So, you know, I, 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 I wasn't playing with house money. You know me. It's no such thing as house money. It's playing with my money because once they give it back to you, it's your money. But uh, and I know I wasn't betting enough that I was going to swear about it. And, and the fact that I got back to back to back, I, it went from Rudolph to Frosty to the Santa Claus, back to back to back on, on the Disney Channel, now Freeform, that um, it, was, it was still worth it. But so, so Wes, we were talking about how, uh, you know, you went out, you bought the swag, you've been, you've been pimping the Coastal Carolina, they've won your money for like two months straight now, almost every single week. So I, I got to think that was the highlight of your Saturday. Well, it wasn't the highlight, but I, I certainly cashed tickets on Coastal. I, I like what I liked on Coastal was the first half. You know, we had talked about that last week. They've never not scored over 12 points in the first half. So, of course, that game got off early. But the way that they were playing the game, just it, it just felt like it, this is Coastal's game. They were surgical when they needed to. So, I mean, that, that was great. And I, I jumped on some money line, and that was great. But the actual highlight of my Saturday was – when I was sitting in, in a room full of people that were betting Bama left and right. I mean, Bama pregame spread, Bama left and right. Bama's lighting up the sky in the first half. And about five minutes ago in the second half, I said, I'm taking Bama under 67 and a half. And then very quickly, it turned to 65 and a half. And to me, that's just common sense. And at that point, I, I, I don't remember. I think Bama had like 40 points on the board, 48 points, something like that in the first half. But you just got to use common sense. The last time we saw a team easily hang 70 points or 67 or even 65, Bama's scary because they've hung 63 twice this year. But we're, we're talking Oregon Ducks 2014. So just pumping the brakes on that game and just watching them score only 10 in the second half because they didn't want to score 65 because they actually cared about me. It was, it was a good, <laughs> that, that was nine one one nine one one. right. That was, that was probably my favorite moment of the Saturday because Costa was great. I was excited about it. And, and, you know, I, the, the picks I post on, on my page, we, we actually had a, a five and two Saturday, which is a great weekend, but at the same time, just being able to pump the brakes on Bama and being ahead of that, that, that hook, that curve. It just, it, it felt great. Normally you go with the momentum and, and ego tells you they're going to keep going. They're going to keep going. But intelligence says what 60, 67 points. I'm sorry, but there's college basketball teams that don't hang 67 points. No. And we talk about it all the time with those big teams and those big spreads. 
that when you get to the now uh, Alabama, a, a few of the teams are a little different because we all know that the second stringers at Alabama will, were, were starting on the other teams that they play against. 